Okay, today we will be learning about adaptation, how something adapts. This means how an animal is suited to where it lives. We're all suited to where we live, even humans in our own homes. We are adapted to where we live. It's called adaptation. And we're going to look at three separate animals, and then I'm going to ask you to look at a specific animal that's probably very close to you. So first, the giraffe. We can look at the way it looks um, and the way it's adapted to eat and camouflage as well, how, it's, how it looks cosmetically to help it blend in. So a giraffe has a long neck and they eat from acacia trees. So they need their long neck in order to be able to stand tall and get the leaves from the acacia trees, unlike other animals. They can't fly up there, so they have long legs and a long neck. They have a camouflaged coat, which means all their brown specks and stuff help them hide in the African savanna. So in the, in the trees and in the brown and in the sand, they blend in. So when you go through the Kruger Park and you look for a giraffe, you have to look really hard because they're camouflaged. The other thing they have is the long, tough tongue. They have a really long, really strong tongue to help them get the leaves off the trees. And nobody else really eats those, uh, those leaves in those trees because they have huge acacia thorns. If you've ever stood on one, where well, you really don't want to stand on one. Uh, and their tough tongue actually ma means that they can get in and around the thorns. And even if they touch the thorns, it doesn't get harmed. And they have a fringed tail, that's the black thing at the end, to keep the flies away. So when they're getting bothered by insects and flies, they flap their tail around and it swats the flies away like we would do with a fly swatter or one of those mosquito rackets. So giraffe's adaptation is in its neck, in its tongue, in its legs and in its tail. So then we can look at a lion. How do you think a lion is adapted to its environment or where it lives? They have very powerful back legs to help them run fast to catch their prey and their back legs are even shaped in a way that helps them bounce. If you look at a cheetah, they're even more uh, shaped in a way to help them run fast because their hind, le hind legs work like shoulders and they, they move in circles almost like a wheel. Okay, so lions are very strong in their back legs to help them run fast and also to jump when they catch their prey. They have a camouflaged coat also, same like a giraffe, but it's not speckled. They're all brown, so they really blend into the savannah or into the, like the Kruger areas, very dry and dense. And they have a mane, so their mane is the fur around their neck. And it's not just there so that they look handsome. It's for when two male lions fight, it protects their necks from being attacked. So they have a nice big mane, strong back legs. They obviously also have very large teeth for um, eating their prey. And they usually go for the neck, puncture the neck, and then they get their prey immediately. And they have the last point there, good eyesight. For hunting at night so we can't see well at night but they actually have like green goggles for seeing at night so that they can hunt their prey when other prey can't really see them the rock python snake how is that adapted to its environment so you can see already already just from the picture that they're very camouflaged they'll blend in look a little bit like a tree stick um, they slither, so they don't have any legs, obviously. Um, how else will they be able to catch their prey? With no arms and legs, they can slither through the grass and rocks quietly. So they can creep without making any noise. They can also stretch their jaws and skin so that they can swallow animals much bigger than themselves. And if you've ever seen that happen, they can swallow massive things, even rabbits. So it doesn't look big, but it actually dislocates its jaw 
so that it opens up and around and the whole body stretches to engulf, to swallow a huge animal. It has long curved teeth that can be used to make deep wounds in its prey. So similar to the lion with its fangs, the python also has this. And then it can puncture the animal and stun it and kill it quickly so that it can take time to swallow it. And it usually takes them quite long. So it's good that they have these long curved teeth or fangs so that they can kill it immediately and then take their time to swallow it being so huge. And it has a long body that can wrap itself around its prey and squeeze it to death. So if it doesn't use its fangs and its poison to kill the animal, it can squeeze it. Okay, and they wrap themselves around you so that you cannot breathe. And then afterwards, when the animal's dead, they'll release it and then they'll slowly open up their jaw and engulf it, swallow it. So that's three examples of animals that are adapted to live in their environment. You can see the size of this python. Ooh, horrible. Okay, but they stretch and they get enormous. So I want you guys to look at your pets. We've got a little hamster and a chicken and a goldfish, a kitty, a puppy or a dog, and a parrot or a bird. Okay. Now I want you guys to choose your pet, or maybe someone else's pet, or maybe just a pet that you'd like. And ask yourself some questions. You can set it up nicely for me in any kind of way you want, in, in, a, in a table or in a diagram. It would be lovely if you can draw a diagram of your animal too. Um, and then you can even use it, you could draw a diagram and use arrows to point to the different uh, parts of how it is adapted. And the questions you want to ask yourselves are, is it camouflaged? So is its color, does that help it adapt? Can it run fast? Does that help it? If it has wings, maybe it can fly fast. If it's a fish, it's got fins, which help it swim. Uh, and has it got whiskers? So whiskers, if you weren't aware, on uh, cats and dogs, even hamsters, they help with balance. And they also help with spacing. So like a hamster uses its whiskers to tell how f uh, the places that it can get through, how big it is compared to a place it's trying to get through. And they use these whiskers as sensors. That's why they're actually so important if you didn't know what they were there for before. Uh, some animals, dog, your dogs have pads on their feet, right? These, you, will n you don't usually take your dog in hot sand because they can get burnt and it helps them to feel the terrain, the land that they're running on, okay? You can think of their eyesight. Do they have good eyes? Maybe like a cat's eye is shaped very specifically, so you could look that up, all right? Also, the puppy, look at its fur and how it changes as it gets older. So when it's younger, it's nice and soft and cuddly and then as it goes through life, it needs to become more and more hardy. So the, 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 um, the fur gets tougher and thicker. Uh, look at their colors, camouflage. Can they run their legs? How are they shaped? Okay. With birds as well, their beak. What does their beak look like? We had a chicken once and uh, her beak got funny as she got older and we had to cut it off so then she wasn't able to pick up her own seed uh, and a uh, beak is obviously very important and it's shaped in a way that helps them to pick up seed and worms from the ground okay a chicken also its tail feathers and its wings it doesn't fly but it helps it to run faster they have three funny little shaped claw feet those are also it helps them bounce and if you're going to choose a fish, there's many different reasons for fish. How do they breathe underwater? Well, they've got gills. So I want you guys to choose your pet or a pet that you know of or a pet that you would like and draw me a diagram of it showing how it may be adapted to live in its environment. Okay, looking at all these different things, teeth, eyes, noses and dogs are really important because it helps them sniff out uh, food. If we weren't feeding them, they would obviously have to sniff out their food and they would need teeth appropriate 
to tear meat off bones and stuff. So have a look at that. If you have any questions, you're more than welcome to ask. You can also look at going online, try and find some information of how the pet that you've chosen has adapted. And then you can put it in your science books under a nice new date with a diagram and a table or with arrows, however you want to set it up nice and neatly to show the adaptation of the animal you have chosen.